This is now day four that I've had this device, and still, the actual drone has never left this table. If you think that you're going from never flying FPV to weaving in and out of buildings and going through and, and recreating that like bowling viral video that's been making the rounds recently, pff, good f luck. <laughs> A lot of the reviews that I've seen of the DJI FPV is from people who have flown FPV before or people who are like, whatever, let's just go and their confidence is next level. But you see me, I can't really afford to just be out 1500 bucks like that. This is not something that I want to go out and crash test. I think that's enough stuff. All right, so I want to make sure that I was set up for success for this video because my experience with drones, DJI Mavic Pro 1, first generation, never upgraded, never really needed to because I fly it maybe a handful of times a year. But as you could probably tell in the dramatic intro, I have zero experience with uh, FPV. And so that's what I wanted to get into today. So I got the fly more combo. And so what that includes, of course, you have the drone, which came with one battery. They're like 20 minute batteries. And I think if you're flying at full speed in the manual mode, you get like 10. So I got the fly more combo, uh, which came with two more batteries and this cool little like triple quick charge station here. Obviously, we got the remote, the goggles, V2, whatever. And then I got this guy because I figured it could be possibly easier to do this than trying to figure out all the different controls. And then the non DJI thing I got uh, in the mail today was Freewell sent me out their NDs specifically made for the DJI FPV. Uh, ND filters can lower the shutter speed, which gives more realistic motion burr. Will that be as beneficial on an FPV drone since you're usually racing around a lot faster and too much motion blur obviously would look pretty gross. So I'll be curious to try these out. So let's talk real quick about the flight simulator because a lot of creators have talked about it, but they've kind of breezed on past it, understandably, because again, they have more experience or just didn't want to talk about it in their videos. But I gotta say, if it weren't for the flight simulator, I probably would have returned this drone immediately. So for me, the past handful of days, I've literally just spent about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes a day, just kind of going in the flight simulator, going on the different training courses and just getting better. Now you can clearly see here that I have crashed hundreds of times while trying to go through different obstacles. As you can see from these screen recordings uh, throughout the past couple of days, I definitely started to feel more comfortable with just flying. And literally as of this morning, I feel comfortable kind of going through some obstacles now, not the small little holes where you have to go in a hole and then sharp corner and then go out the exit, nothing like that. But I can now be like, hey, I wanna go through that obstacle, line myself up, go through it. And I'm pretty stoked. This is very much feeling like anything else. You know, you pick up Guitar Hero back in the day for the first time or uh, Beat Saber in VR and you're like, how can anyone do this? But you give it a couple hours of practice and repetition, you're gonna get better at it just like anything else, right? The hardest part about all of this as a beginner is I have yet to be able to focus on flying this from a cinematography standpoint. I'm probably making my viewers nauseous. I know I'm probably making my dad nauseous, sorry. Heck, me wearing the goggles, it got a little rough sometimes. But the way I'm flying right now is literally just, hey, don't crash this, avoiding the obstacles. And it's just my opinion as of right now, as someone who is starting brand new in the FPV world, don't buy it like two days before you're supposed to go on a professional shoot. Have the mindset of like, oh, I would really love to learn FPV and to use this drone to get some of those amazing shots and understand that like it may be a month before you're at that level. Alrighty, time has come. It's time to go into manual mode. No more playing around, no more simulators, no more normal or sport mode. <sighs> Let's see if we can actually get a decent 
cool epic shot with the FPV drone with kind of a week's worth of training and not really a week I mean really it's only a couple hours worth just kind of spread out over the week it's been a busy week cut me some slack For some reason the right joystick doesn't seem to be working fully in manual. I don't know if this is something I'm not turning on. I went through all the settings and unlike the simulator where you can you know do backflips, front flips, rolls, it basically the right stick is still acting like you're in end mode where it you know just basically does light turns and, and pivots but not crazy aggressive rolls and dives and all that. Literally can't get to do that. I uh, got frustrated so now I want to try this little guy and see if there's any difference, if it's easier. This I did not get to run in the simulation, so it'll be interesting how this one does. I'm calling it right now. If you're new to FPV, this is your new best friend. This is so much easier than the controller. So it's actually telling me right now in the goggles that there's a piloted aircraft nearby. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but right above me is a plane. And it's probably at, it's a small plane, so it's probably at like, I don't know, 600 feet or something. So pretty cool that it warns you. But seriously, this is so much easier than the remote. Uh, but you don't get manual mode with this, so it's very fun for a normal and, and sport mode. Super easy to get into. Now before you leave the comment on this video talking about how it's, you know, a bunch of BS or whatever that we didn't even see any like spiral or dives or anything, imagine how I feel after buying this and then the right controller joystick thing just doesn't want to do any of that fun stuff. So there goes a week of simulator flying for nothing. By the way, if you have any idea of a fix or a known issue for that, please let me know down in the comments below. Probably just have to send it back to DJI and see if they can fix it. So this video turned out 
very, very differently than what my original plan was. I mean, I was contacting people to go through these awesome like hiking in the forest, flying through trees sort of thing. Uh, so really cool car stunts, all these scenarios that I've seen other people film in FPV environments that look amazing. My nerves were maxed out when I was flying this in an open field with no subject really to film and no one anywhere nearby. But honestly, by the time I was about I don't know, 30 minutes into flying, about two batteries in, uh, I started feeling more comfortable. I started kind of doing those 360 spin arounds um, uh, in manual mode. I love the noise. It sounds freaking awesome and it is super, super fast. This is not a drone that you can like, ooh, I'm gonna kind of sneak over this building and get a cool shot in, no. Everyone in the nearby vicinity is going to know you are there. But you know, there's something interesting about drones and drone videos. Drones, I kind of put in the same categories as like gimbals. You see, I know a lot of filmmakers and content creators who buy the latest drones and the latest gimbals. And then if you ask them like a year later, hey, where's that, you know, DJI FPV or that Ronin S2 or whatever, they're gonna be like, oh, I, I sold it after a handful of times or, oh, it's over there on the shelf with half an inch of dust on it. And there's a lot of factors that go into that, but for me personally, one issue I always have is locations. You see, I live in the Midwest and there are some beautiful places here, but I'm not a huge traveler, I'm not a huge hiker, and so I'm not doing that stuff constantly. And so I kind of live vicariously through like the Peter McKinnons of the world where I'll watch their drone footage, they're going to these beautiful landscapes, you kind of ignore the minute issues with the camera quality or whatever, and you just are in awe by the scenery. Meanwhile, me, I kind of fly this thing again in a nearby park. Nothing is looking too spectacular. The coolest thing to film there is a train track, which I kept trying to get the train schedule so I could get a cool shot of that, but I just never hit the mark. I know prior to making this video, probably the most requested question I had had to do with ND filters. Huge thanks to Freewell for sending me out their new kit specifically designed for the DJI FPV. I definitely used them and found if you're going for the more cinematic shots, they can be extremely useful. First of all, I love the packaging. This has a nice magnetic case to it and everything is right up here. Super easy to kind of pluck out and put back on. They are a bit large and that's because the FPV has such a ultra wide viewing angle more so than the Mavic. So you literally can just attach it to the front, push it on there and it balanced okay. I did get a error, but the message I was getting on the screen is gimbal access max reach, something like that, basically telling me that the top of the ND is hitting uh, kind of this guard, whereas without it, the camera can indeed pan up a little bit more. I just pan up. Oh my God, I call myself a filmmaker. The camera can tilt up further past that little housing there. So if you're flying all over the place, like when I was in sport mode, going real crazy, turning and going up and down super fast, uh, I got that air a lot. It didn't seem to actually affect anything. So you technically can just ignore that message and keep flying. On super sunny days, definitely helpful to make sure that your shutter speed can be set properly. It's going to give you a better image overall. Hopefully this video added some value to anyone out there who is looking to get into FPV drones or maybe you just bought this and were kind of nervous and wanted to know that you're not alone. If you're curious about all the parts uh, and accessories that I got with the drone. You can check them out in the links in the description. Everything will be linked down there. As well as if you have any other questions about the DJI FPV, let me know down in the comments below and I'll answer anything that I can. I know it's been a bit since I've uploaded. I've been working basically on like three or four videos at once. And this video has just taken a lot longer than I had originally hoped. So thank you all for the patience. If you're curious about what's coming up next, I'm getting the OnePlus 9 Pro in my hands in the next couple of days, hopefully, as well as the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, which a lot of this video was shot on. Those videos and plenty more to come, so if you're not already, definitely get subscribed. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.